Hey friends, welcome back to the Code Wolf, and welcome to the first in a three-part series all about file uploads using Blazor. This series is designed to be the ultimate reference for Blazor file uploads, and it's fully updated for .NET 8. In each video, we'll explore how to handle file uploads using one of the different Blazor rendering modes, which are static server-side rendering, interactive server-side rendering with SignalR, and of course, WebAssembly. In this first video, we're going to explore the simplest option, which is the static server-side rendering, but look for the other two videos very soon. Please remember to hit subscribe to support the channel. It really helps a lot, and let's dive in. If you're new to the file upload series, I've prepared a sample application that's available on GitHub. The link is included in the video description. You can see from the README that we'll cover important file upload topics, such as how to submit form data values alongside an uploaded file, upload multiple files at once, how to save files safely both locally and to the cloud, and work with different types of model binding. It's all here for every rendering mode. So I have this sample project open in Visual Studio, and let's make sure we have the server static upload.racer component open. This is the one that we'll be looking at first, and it's also the most simple. So inside this file, if we were to just work our way down through the code, you can see at the top we declare a route, and this is just set to our home page. Then we inject a couple services that we'll look at later that will help with our file saving. But you'll notice we don't specify a render mode attribute in here, and that's because we're using server-side rendering, which is the default, so we don't have to specify that. Then we just have our title and a basic uh, sub message here. And we also will display a message uh, once the file is uploaded to let the user know what the status of that is or how that went. Now, the most important part of this whole component is this form here, since that's what the user interacts with and that's how we upload our file. And so we're using the Blazor edit form component, which is really powerful and handles a lot of things for us or makes this easier. So first we're binding our data to a ticket model, and that ticket is defined down at the bottom of the class. So I've just included this right in the component so it's sort of self-contained. And I called this server static ticket for clarity. But this includes two properties, which are a title and a description. I wanna show how we can upload standard form data alongside a file upload. And then we also have an iform file collection property called attachments. This will let the user upload multiple attachments. That's why we're using a collection. If you just wanted to use uh, one form file, you could just use the iform file type instead of the collection. But it's nice to let the user be able to upload multiple. So back up on our edit form, we then say that the handle valid submit method is what's going to handle this form when the user actually submits it. And we give it a form name of tickets since Blazor server-side rendering forms need that form name for model binding. And of course, make sure to set this as a post request with multi-part form data. Uh, this is important at the end here. You wanna make sure to include these or it won't work right. Whenever you're doing file uploads, you have to make sure you set this to multi-part form data. Now inside of this form, we of course have our validation components and then we have three inputs, and the first two are pretty standard input texts. So these just handle our title and description, but this other one here, this input file, is actually the most interesting. This is where the user will be able to select a file to upload. And right now I have this set to a name of ticket.attachments. That's because at the time of this recording, this bind value attribute that the other inputs have actually is not working right. This is a known bug in .NET 8. So at the time that you watch this, you might be able to use this at bind value. Um, so that would look something like this. And this should work, but right now it's not. So I'm just manually putting the name here. And make sure to specify the multiple as well. And that's what, what lets users upload multiple files. So with all that set up, when the user actually hits submit, that's when this handle valid submit method is going to run. And all that data will be bound to our ticket model up here. So this ticket property maps to the model on our form, and that's the server static ticket type that we looked at before. So just make sure that you apply this attribute to this property so that the model data gets bound to it. And then inside of the handle valid submit method, this is where all the magic of actually saving or uploading that file uh, goes to work. So since we're allowing multiple file uploads, we just say ticket.attachments, and we loop through each of those with a for each loop. 
And the first thing we want to do is sanitize our file name. So you want to make sure that you encode that so that there's no harmful characters in that potentially. And then we save that locally. And to do that, we just create a path object. And we, com we combine that with our environment content root path. So if you remember up here, we injected our web host environment. And we can use that to assemble our path. And we have a folder called images. So if we look at our uh, solution structure, there's this images folder here. So that's where the files will go. And then we're going to add the safe file name at the end of that. So this will construct where the file's supposed to go. And then we use a file stream to actually copy the uploaded file to that location. So these two lines will handle actually writing that file data to our file system. Now we'll come back to this in a moment. Um, this is to use Azure Blob Storage if you'd rather upload the file to the cloud rather than saving it locally. Um, that's a really common option these days, so I thought I'd include that. But for now, let's move on. And here we just reset the ticket to uh, empty data and we give the user a message that the file was uploaded successfully. Now with files, a lot of things can go wrong, so we do have this catch message here where it'll print out an error if that happens. And the last item here, I added this to-do comment to save the title and description and the image name to a database. So we're not going to get into database uh, operations here right now, but usually in a real project, you would save the form data as an entry in a database and then include a reference to the image rather than saving the actual image to the database. Sometimes people will save images to databases. I'm not really a fan of that for traditional databases. You can do that with certain types of document or blob type databases, but I'm going to assume you're going to save a separate entry for that. And we're just going to focus on writing this file upload. Now, You'll see I also included this blob storage part. So here we're using our blob client to get a blob container out in Azure called tickets. And then we just call the upload blob async and we open the file stream um, and send that out to Azure. I'm also prefixing this with a random number just to deal with some storage account stuff with duplicate blobs um, that we don't want to deal with right now. But this is an easy way around that. Now to get the rest of this Azure blob storage setup working, you also have to go into your program.cs file and add a standard call to add Azure clients as well as add blob service client. And I'm using a connection string approach here. Um, be careful to never share out these connection strings. These are highly secure, so I'll be deleting this in a moment. Um, but to use these, you'll need to install a couple of packages, which are the Microsoft.extensions.azure and Azure.storage.blobs, these two packages here. And then you'll be able to set all this up in your program.cs. I don't want to spend too much time on Azure related stuff, but this is a common scenario, so I wanted to cover it. So that's kind of the general flow of file uploads with Blazor server side rendering. And I've set a breakpoint here so we can actually test this out. So let's go out to our browser here where the app is already running. And remember, we have our different pages here for different types of uploads. But let's go to server static. And I'll give this a title of testing with a testing description. And then let's choose a file to upload, or maybe even a few files. So I'm just gonna grab all three of these. And when I hit submit, you can see we land in the breakpoint on our handle valid submit method. And on this ticket object, we have three attachments. So look at that, our iForm file collection worked properly. And then we can step through here and see that this actually saves it to our local storage here, our local file system. So now if I were to go over to our images folder, you can see our first uh, picture is there. And I'm just gonna hit continue and we'll come back out to the browser and we'll say file uploaded. And back in Visual Studio, all three of those images actually did load in properly. So if I were to open this, you know, there's one of our images with Mario there. And if we go out to Azure, I already have the storage account open here. Again, I'm kind of assuming you know how to use Azure for this video if you're interested in this flow. But if I were to refresh this, uh, you can see we have our same three pictures there with our number prefix just to avoid the duplicate issue, but everything did upload successfully. It's really that easy. Blazor server-side rendering file uploads are actually pretty nice to work with. So that completes the first demo. Um, in the next two videos, we're gonna be looking at how to do this with using Blazor Server Signal R and Blazor WebAssembly, which both have some slightly different nuances and a bit different flow to them, but but just hit subscribe to stay tuned for when those come out soon. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on The Code Wolf. Thanks a lot.